Yeah. Natan Sharansky, the chair of the Institute for the Study of Global Antisemitism, is here to talk more about that New York Times ad. Natan, you and two others, Alicia Wazell and Bernard Henry Levy, placed this ad in the New York Times a couple of days after Holocaust Remembrance Day, commemorating a crime you said has no equivalent. What inspired this bold move? Well, first of all, I have to give credit to uh, Elie Wiesel's foundation and to Alicia Wiesel, the son of uh, our great moral leader, Elie Wiesel. But, uh, but I was more than happy to join this initiative immediately to find out that there are the whole people kept almost in the con conditions of concentration camps. And all the awful things which are happening to them was awful. And to think that the free world can ignore it. Well, the free world is speaking about it, knows about it, but is not linking it in any way to their relations with China, economically, socially, politically. And so the fact that the free world can ignore it like this. Isn't it the worst way to uh, to give uh, uh, to to remember the Holocaust? After all, the, we have to remember the Holocaust not only because we Jews suffered, and all the world has to to have sympathy to our suffering. It's because learning about the Holocaust, we can understand how awful can be the con consequence for the world if the world is ignoring such crimes. But you noted something really important earlier about Elie Wiesel, um, which you included in this ad. Um, he said, to be a devoted Jew requires fighting hatred and taking action for human rights wherever oppression is occurring. Where else has the Jewish community and you as a leader sounded the alarm on these issues? My big concern is that human rights, which are undermined uh, 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 China, Russia, uh, you'll take uh, so many regimes in uh, in Africa. You'll take what's happening in the Middle East at this very moment in Syria. Yes. How the cannot can is not going to connect this policy of human rights with their global policy of international relations. Natan, I have to ask yeah. you about the backdrop of why you put in that ad. That call for action to protect the Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang in, has the Beijing Olympics as this phenomenal thing that everyone is training for. What do you say to those who counter your calls for boycotting the games with claims of how unfair it is on the athletes who trained for this moment? Well, athletes who are training at this moment are also part of the free world of the world. And for them, it is as important as for everybody else uh, whether this world will remain free and whether they will remain free. I will say I happened to be in Soviet prison when they were, have, had to be Olympic Games in Moscow. That's right. And there was appeal to boycott Olympic Games. And the argument of Russian uh, leaders was exactly this. How you can Punish the sportsmen. I have to say, it's not excellent. The American sportsmen and many other sportsmen in the free world understood that uh, for their future, as well as for the future of this world, is to support this boycott. And we were very happy in the Soviet Union. And it was a very important message to the leaders of the Soviet Union that they will be more and more isolated if they will continue policy of iron curtain and keeping uh, 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 Soviet Jews and the others, in fact, in prison. I have one last question for you, and this is about the Uyghur Force Labor Prevention Act that was passed by the Biden administration. They're waiting for comments on this at the end of this month. Do you expect similar action from members of the international community? Is this your call to action for people to evaluate the best way to government to government stop the problems um, and the persecution of Uyghur Muslims in China? Uh, yes, for sure. I, I, I think here the solidarity of the free world in these questions is extremely important. The totalitarian regimes count on this, that in the free world, people and peoples and countries and governments have so many immediate interests, they will not speak in the one voice, not like totalitarian regime, which can force everybody to speak in one voice. And that's why to demonstrate the unity of the free world in this position is extremely important. If you want 
to have real impact on the Chinese policy, free world has to speak in one voice. That's why as it is very important that the step of the American administration will not be the lonely single step. Thank you so much, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you.